Hello, uh, good evening, and welcome to the Cadden Heads uh, Authentic Collection Tasting tonight. Uh, my name's Cameron, and I'm joined by Grant McPherson. Um, for those that normally join our tastings, uh, usually behind the scenes is Nathan, but somebody's actually told him that it's a lot of holidays, so we need to find out who that was. So it's uh, so our sales and marketing executive, Carly Robertson, is uh, is actually doing the job just now, and so far so good, uh, with a slight worry there just a moment ago, <laughs> but we're all good now. I'm all right tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, apologies, I'm full of the cold, um, even though it's middle of April. Yeah. Uh, I still, so if I'm sneezing or coughing, just bear with me, please. Yeah. Also, bear with me, just the, we're in a room here that it might be, well, it's wind and rain outside, so if you hear any sort of noises in the background, uh, it's just a miserable night in Camelton, so wind or rain might play a havoc with the sound. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Uh, and my stomach too, I didn't think <laughs> about it earlier, so uh, you never know. Um, so tonight we're going to try um, eight drams from uh, a new authentic collection, which will be getting released tomorrow. So we'll talk about those, we'll go through them. Um, as usual, we're asking for some questions before on our social media. And again, on tonight, if anyone's got any questions, please ask us, it, um, and we'll try our best to answer them. Or as usual, anything we don't know, we'll just make up anyway. So, but um, I think... We'll get started, don't yeah, we? Eight drams, yeah. so... Okay. Eight drams to get through, so yeah, we better get started. So, the first whiskey we're going to is from Fetter Cairn Distillery. And obviously, I think I've, hope everybody's enjoying the little packs. Uh, great feedback with the tasting packs we're doing for every release, so... Okay. Yeah, very good. Very positive feedback, to say. Um, presentation wise is really good, and obviously the whiskeys are fantastic as well. So, uh, we'll continue on that with every release, including the rum as well. I think you pointed out earlier on, before we used to have the, the small plastic ones, but Grant said before we went on, it's quite good we don't have to do a health and safety check beforehand because they were a nightmare to get off, but I think a lot of people injured them trying to pull them with their teeth, so we've got proper decent ones now. Yeah. Well, it's it's professional, it's it's it. Yeah, professional. Yeah, professional. Yeah. So yeah, fair to him, uh, which is quite a nice one to start off with because uh, well, I was there a couple of weeks ago as well, so I was doing some... Uh, I've tasted up in Aberdeen before I went through a show in Clarkmansha and uh, just spent some time visiting some distilleries. So, wait and see if better came. Uh, beautiful distillery to visit, and I'm pretty sure you all enjoy this one here. So, it's 17 years old, 52.7% uh, alcohol. So, uh, yep, single cast cast strength. Uh, what was I saying last one? So, fully matured in bourbon cask. Uh, but it's, one of the unusual ones I noticed when I was at the distillery, they use uh, a cooling system on the top of the stills, uh, which they say helps cool the, the reflux falling back in the stills, so it kind of produces a lighter style spirit. Uh, so it's quite a, unusual. Quite, quite a unique way of doing it as well. Um, I've never seen it personally, but... It, seen it, it was off in operation when I was there, and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, spectacular as well, so yeah, it's, it's good. Nice to be distillery. I was, I was quite surprised, I thought it would be a lot bigger distillery, but uh, you know, it, was, yeah, it was really good when I was there. Did you see how much they're producing just now? Uh, I'm not sure in fact. Uh, I think it's a couple of million before anyway. Yeah. It's, I could be wrong, but yeah. I'm sure something. It's obviously owned by uh, the White Mackay group, so uh, part of the same group as Dalmore and stuff like that. So. It's good to see some folk already on. Um, got Alan, got Gav from Edinburgh, um, Whiskey Rover, Jordan, Andrew too, so it's good to see those. I can't see any of the YouTube ones, so I don't know, in case you think I'm ignoring you. Oh, well, it's actually on YouTube. Okay, well, <laughs> Carly's actually done something that Nathan couldn't. We can actually uh, sync them now, so I can see everybody. Uh, this one, this is a crack it's and a, Yeah, I mean, you've got your sweet floral <clears throat> notes to it. Uh, yes, it's full matured in bourbon, but 17 years, you know, it's a good quality bourbon cask. Um, but yeah. Typical that sweet, sweet floral fruity note to it. Um, I'm sure Carly's got the, oh, the flavour wheels up on the screen there, maybe glance over there. So, uh, even the, that's a good talking point as well, the flavour wheel, because uh, it's something new for it as well. It's done in the last few bottlings and uh, it's getting very, very positive feedback as well. They'll still do the taste notes, they don't get me wrong, the taste notes do serve a purpose as well, but the, the flavour wheel for the worldwide markets and stuff like that uh, is very beneficial to us. I think with, with the flavour wheel too, um, obviously Grant says we still do the tasting notes for it, but what it does, it serves a multitude of purposes as well. One, we don't have the most eloquent palates here in Campbelltown, so 
trying to explain to somebody, you know, um, in America or in Japan or in Australia, well, maybe one's in Australia, maybe, but what a Tinnix tea cake tastes like or, you know, shortbread or whatnot, that it, it, we were trying to just give a kind of like an idea of the flavours behind it. Another thing as well is that independent bottling, even though like probably most people will be on tonight, know quite a lot about it, it's still a very niche market and it's still, there's still a lot of education to give with it too. So not everybody completely understands exactly how independent bottling works, you know, what it actually means. So that, to steal um, our colleague Ronald Watson's um, example, um, so for instance, we did a man with more 13 year old a couple of years ago, and it was in a bourbon cask, so damn good dram as well, really, really cracking whiskey. Now, if somebody who didn't really know much about independent bottling or start to get into it, they really liked that manic more. And then about eight months later, we'd done a manic more 14 year old, but this time it was in sherry. They might not have noticed it was a change in cast or realized the difference and went, I really love that manic more. I'm going to go for this manic more. But they're two completely different acts, you know, completely, you know, um, different beasts. Whereas with having the flavor wheel here, you know, if you can see like, you know, what, what the, the segments will be at, you can maybe find another distillery or a whiskey which has got a similar profile to the one you like. And if I'll be perfectly honest, out of over 100 distilleries that we've got, it, there is so many different flavors from each one that, you know, there, there is a lot going on. So if you can find something that's maybe a similar kind of... You, mean, you can't... Years ago, you could pinpoint whiskey for regions and characteristics, which is not the case because... Uh, multiple regions are doing different styles nowadays as well. So uh, doing that flavour will say somebody comes into the shop or what what does he normally drink? And say if we don't have it, but what sort of style is that? You know, we can opt for that's the style we're looking for, we can recommend this particular whiskey. So it's certainly it's working so far. Um, well, I remember I used to work in the shop and a uh, like we talked about it was like when Farkless it would bald, but it was in bourbon cask. So somebody would come in um and they were maybe not they, they were maybe more into own bottlings so they were trying to understand what independent bottling was and it's said oh glenn farkless i really love glenn farkless 15 is one of my favorite whiskies but the 15 uh, own bottle of glenn farkless is predominant the sherry so they would say should i get this one and i'm like do you have you ever tried any of the bourbon kind of flavors you know the bourbon cask whiskies um because they might buy that go off oh, that's that's not what anything like the glenn farkless i'm used to so it's just trying to kind of educate a bit more and give people a bit more idea of the kind of flavours they can get. Yeah. So they can find themselves what, and yourself can find what you're trying to look for and maybe find a similar kind of bottling. Let's see, because obviously, <clears throat> I'm sure the majority of people that are viewing in tonight have got a good understanding of what Cadden is and what we do, which is brilliant, but there's still a lot of people who maybe visit the shops. What is Cadden is? What's, you know, they look at the shelves and they see a mass of whiskies, but what differentiates one another and that's where the shop staff can sort of influence you and sort of okay what style are you looking for and help out uh, find the, the right whiskey for yourself. I mean if you go back in general, I mean even if you go back years and years ago, probably when you started as well when I first started, you know I knew a little bit about maybe the more mainstream whiskies or the distilleries and I came in and was like what's a Balmain? You know, like, you know I'd be like Othrusk, you know obviously I was mispronouncing it but I probably still do now. You know, so it is, it's a huge world, you know, and, every, you know, like, there's nobody that's, um, that knows everything. So even for ourselves, you know, like, yeah, well, everybody, everybody's a small thing. You're always learning and stuff, you know. That's a great thing when we're really involved with, more so yourself and Ryan picking the cast and stuff. But then we get the sales team involved with mm -hmm. the tasting notes and stuff. So and even the shop staff as well, uh, where possible. And it's also, we do hope to maybe get on the road again a couple of times and do some more pub tastings in the, the shops and tasting panels from Edinburgh or London or Camelton and stuff. So watch this space as well. We might be trying to get that going again sometime in the I future. I think Edinburgh doing one for this one as well. Yeah, they're in the, there's a tasting on tonight um, in, the, in Edinburgh. So Tony and Tom are doing a tasting with his a slide up tonight. So or tuna, hopefully they're not tuning into us, but hopefully they're doing a bit. <laughs> You'll get a bit apart from those guys than us anyway. <laughs> Um, so again, with the first one here, the Fair Cairn, um, the first two whiskies probably are the kind of style of whiskey I really love, that kind of um, bourbon cask whiskies. I love lots of different styles, but 
I love that kind of too. It's got that sweetness, the fruitiness. It's there. And with me, I, I, you might have seen me eloquently putting the water in with mm -hmm. my finger earlier on. Um, it's just a few drops of water in this one, I think. Are you trying to say I forgot the pipette? I see you set everything else up. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I've did absolutely nothing in the set up here, so I can't say anything. Um, but it, it is. It's a cracking drum. You know, it's got that. Kind of, it's got a little fudgy, kind of creamy mm. note as well. Um, you know, so the you've got the tasting card in the pack and stuff. So all the price, there's tasting notes on that. So uh, we can run through the prices later on. But the the t prices are the three tasting cards. So and for eighty five pounds, it's a cracking drum. Yeah. For nowadays as well, it's. Um, you know, I've said that 10, 15 years ago, just like everything else, though. Um, you're trying to, we're trying to get whiskies that people will, will, will open up and buy. You know, um, you can see other ones. You know, and fortunately, we got these at a time where the price wasn't too high or whatever. You know, like, I know that like, I've spoken to other independents that have maybe got some similar ages of this, and it's cost, you know, to put it out at this price, you know, they're actually going to help, help you manage that. Mm -hmm. Was just because we had the stocks before, um, so it is it is kind of fortunate. That I'm not saying eighty five pounds is cheap for it in any way, but I think for nowadays a seventeen year old cast strength whiskey, you know, first me from a bottle. Do how many bottles came from this one? It's hundred eighty five. Oh, it's actually it's right in front of me, isn't it? Yeah. I'm in the glasses, so I can see. Hundred eighty six. You post it. But not that's a pretty good stuff. Good standpoint, yeah. I mean, I, again, not going to insult M's intelligence. It's great. It take, doesn't need water, but it does take a few drops, a few drops of water. So. It's one that we always do visit the first whiskey we try and any sort of tastings and stuff. And we always go revisit just in case you quite acclimatise the palate to a cast strength whiskey. So good to experiment. We just drop of water. I think that it's actually a point when whenever we're choosing the whiskies too that they're not always the, you know, we'll try and cast strength as well. They add a little water sometimes just to see how they develop because sometimes the cast strength is not as perfect as it's, you know, as long as you can tell it's got good quality elements behind it, it's got um, certain, certain characteristics, you know, no flaws and things like that, that you can go, that's pretty good. It might need a little more, but yeah. somebody would like that, that strength. And just, a, and I'm not talking about, you know, half a litre of water, I mean, just a little couple of drops. And then even then, you might a couple more drops after that, and you can experiment yourself. But you know, everybody themselves know. Um, as Grant said earlier, you can find the way that you want to drink whiskey. You know, um, if you know, would recommend it. But if you if, if you buy the bottle and you put coke into it, fair enough. Okay. I know. <laughs> but as I said, you bought it. You can do what you want with it. Shall we move on to number two? I think we will. So. Number two is another 17 year old and another bourbon barrel here. Um, and this one is actually from the McDuff distillery. So and um, this one's at 54.4 percent in alcohol and McDuff is one of these distilleries that I think over the last few years especially we've been bought in ones and it's become more and more of a popular mm -hmm. um, I think as well it, it probably got left out many many years ago. Yeah. Isn't it? There were always good quality McDuffs, but at the time people could still get maybe, yeah, for instance, you could still get Kleinleash at a really good price. You could still get, um, what do I think off the top of my head? There's hundreds of distillers. But anyway, you could still get a lot of the mainstream ones that are maybe a lot more expensive now. So the, these would probably get forgotten about. And people nowadays, and consumers, and myself as well, you know, you're looking for something at a fair price that's good quality whiskey. Um, you know, that you can actually open up and drink. It's a name you don't see on the market because they don't really market of McDuff themselves. Um, so you're like, people like McDuff, what, what is that? And what's the connection? What is the connection with Glen Devon and stuff? So, um, that's another thing we like to confuse people by naming it after the. Well, in fairness, that's their brand as well. And we we, 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 we do it with the distillery, you know, you wouldn't want to use their trademark, which we'll probably talk about a bit more later on. That's a Okay. Yeah, because there is a few questions being put into us already, so we'll answer them. Um, but the whole trademark and distillery names and stuff is, is a great talking point as well for us and what, why we do it and stuff. So. There's Stephen Gibson saying, Evening Grant, nice to see you again. Cheers. Um, yeah, I mean, if anybody's got any other questions or any feedback on whiskies for open. There's Ruth as well, that's a trouble start now. <laughs> 
Are we any thoughts as well, guys, about the, the first couple of whiskeys that we've tried here? You know, this one's to me is a bit more of a fruit bomb as well. You know, a lot of lot of apples in this one. Um you see there straight away in the, the flavour of wheel, there's no spice, say when you're peaty notes, it's just, is that sweet floral fruity notes. So like all peaches and stuff like mm -hmm. stone fruits. There's no harsh apple coming through, you know, it's not spirity, harsh at all on the palate. Uh, even the no nose prickle. Being in a barrel as well, obviously, you've got more wood contact to it. And I think sometimes we get complacent. We think 17 years old, it's it's not that old. No. If I could take 17 years away from it, if I could go back 17 <laughs> years away. <laughs> but like, um, it's a long time that we spend in a cask. You know, um, and the danger can be that being that long in, it might get overspiced, it could get over woody, um, cause depending on what kind of barrel as well. Because I think with the, the look on it as well, it doesn't look as if it's a third fill, or, you know, it's, it might be a second fill, you know, um, but I've seen some like second fills that, that I really, really liked. You know, a lot of the time the first fills can be really quite that, and you've got to be careful with first fill bar barrels as well. Um, they can sometimes be too okay. First fill barrels are good for maybe if you're trying to maybe produce some younger whiskey. You know, maybe like for instance a hazel bourbon, to, to, for a good example, a hazel bourbon eight year old maybe in a bourbon barrel would be something that would be really excellent. That's the top of my head. Well, it, you know what I mean? But the PE whiskey works young as well, so you've got to look at that as well. And so first fill, second fill, and even the age thing as well. It's like you know. Most of Cameron now is like, we've got to look at a portfolio of cats we have maturing away and try and get a variety of each bottling and age price as well. So you've got, if you bought other in this really say 10 years old and all bourbon, there's you know, quite a similarity there. So you want to vary up a bit with a bit of kind of that, you know, 17 year old, some 10 year old whiskey, uh, some peaty sherry, some nice sort of heavy sherry whiskey there as well. So that's just what we've got to look at. And, you know, how many releases do we do a year? And to vary that up throughout the year. It was... It's a good point, actually. Funnily enough, we, um, I was fortunate enough to do a tasting on Monday night for the Glasgow Whiskey Club, brilliant night, the Bon Accord, and we did seven drams there, and each one was completely different. You know, I think we did like we started off with the Lowland Enigma, mm -hmm. which was more of a spirit driven one. We had a, um, a kind of really strong manzanilla, a Glen Elgin. A, 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 Heavily peated, with the heavily peated cocaine that we're doing it as well. Sneak preview. Um, and with an older one. Too. So the whole range was completely different. And I think it's a good point that being an independent bottler, it's it's, it's very different to it if you're doing it as a distillery. Because generally, if you're doing a distillery tasting, you, you probably already enjoy the whiskeys mm -hmm. from that distillery. So maybe you're just trying different variants. And the most cases, the most people trying and will actually maybe enjoy most of them, yeah. or maybe enjoy all of them. But there's a chance you could try all eight of these and they might not, or if we did very similar ones, mm -hmm. and you might not like eight different sort of bourbon casks from a, to eight different distilleries of the same age or eight different sherries or whatever. So we try and vary as much as we can. Now, obviously that depends on availability of casks that we've got that are ready, but obviously they have to be of good quality too. We have to make sure that we, you know, there's there certain casks that um, are maybe not so available anymore. Like, um, it's very hard to come by. So we've got to make sure that we protect those ones as well, but not just because of the name or the value, but because of the quality of them too. We've got casks maturing away from closed distilleries. Now, if we brought them out, out this year, what would we do next year? So you've got to kind of throw them in maybe here and there, but then Cameron has got to look after these casks and see how they're maturing, make sure they don't drop below 40 percent and stuff. So there is a huge task involved in that. It does mean something or it does, you know, and one of the one of the questions we got earlier on from Whiskey Rover was um comes that Glen Vore going and yeah we checked it it's still it's still good it's still good it's still there. We, we checked it at Christmas time. But the, the funny thing it's actually we've got it's a closed distillery 1982 Glen Vore and obviously Jason's a big Glen Vore fan too but it's one of these ones where I, it's really good and it's that way, do we bottle it now? Do we, I think it's trying to find the right time as well. It's still maturing on nicely, it's still at a decent strength. I'm also, it's, it's nice to uh, keep using it in the, the office every Christmas <laughs> as well. So 
I'm kind of loath to, to to bottle it. So but there will be a point where I've got to go. Right, that this is going to be that. That was the time it was. Yeah, I think so. But, but no, again, the McDuff. I think that's that's we we did a thirteen year old a few years ago in Bourbon. I thought it was a, a, a cracking dram as well. McDuff seems to hold up pretty well. The, the, the actual distill it, it's got. Because everybody commented in the last original collection of McDuff with that. Was that okay? That was the mixture of Bourbon. It's and Bourbon and Sherry. So it was. Yep. Right. Um, I'm storm. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> I that in numerous shows. Um, again, the price point and the quality of it looks fantastic. So, what? We've got a question from Whiskey Robert. Has the quality of bourbon cast dropped in recent years? Um, price is going up. The price is going up. <laughs> yeah. That's a kind of difficult one because, like, obviously our sister companies are Springbank and Egwin Kyle Distilleries, and we're quite fortunate we've got relationships with. Um, suppliers that we can get good quality bourbon casks. Now, it's probably the, the casks that we're buying in from other companies. And for those that might not know, when, when we're purchasing the, the, the casks, 99.9% .9 of the whiskey we purchase comes in blind. We, we buy it blind. You know, you never, you, we don't get details like, but that's a first mm -hmm. fill or a second fill barrel. Um, and I think recently, probably over the last sort of five to 10 years, you can see that maybe the casks that we are getting from these whiskies are maybe a bit more used. Yeah. You know, whether it's the it's not so much the quality beforehand, but I think a lot of the time there's a wood there, there's no doubt there's a wood shortage just now in the industry. Um, there's so much getting produced. You know, um, there's there's got it's like everything else. It's a supply and demand issue. You better look at it, what whiskies are or distillies are. Majority go for blending purposes. So if they're using for bulk blend stock, are they really worried about using first fill cask when it's going to be blended with so many different casks? Uh, well, we went to Edinburgh in January. Um, myself, Grant, Carly, and Jenna for that. For that, it was a education, education trip, um, and we went to the, the Johnny Walker experience, and, and it, was, it was great, great, um, great taste, and we did as well. And the host who was amazing, she was telling us that. You know, Cameron Bridge just now are doing 130 million litres of alcohol a year. And it wasn't until I started thinking, how many casks do you need for that? You know, and that's just one grain distillery. You know, like, um, the, the, so the amount of wood that's needed, I, I can't fathom that in my head. I think because we, especially as we work with a company who, you know, what is it, combined 300,000 litres a year or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. relatively small. And you know how many casks we need, you know, which is not a small amount, but I just so I would have to answer I'm gonna ramble slightly, but to answer your question, I think that the wood at the moment, yeah, that it's probably such a shortage that there's probably more fourth, fifth, 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 fifth fill, maybe in some cases. I can't tell you exactly how many times they're using it. That would be up to those companies. And we don't get any information from the brokers that we purchase them from. Um so yeah, and, and again that probably answers a question as to why we do a lot more re racking these days as well. And it, we try and find out as much information as possible. When we say we're doing tastings or doing, you know, product sheets and stuff, we want to try and give the public, because people, the public want to know if it's first fill, second fill, you know, the sherry and stuff. So if we know that information, yes, we might not put it on the label, but we'll openly tell people in the shop, the shop staff will be rehearsed on what the, the product is and stuff. As much. So we can put that to the customer as well. So it's quite important to us. That's D Mahindra's on as well, it's a CED. Um, Alex Burns is coming to the town tomorrow, so if you're about Alex, we'll probably see you about. Um, Stephen Gibson again said some absolutely bangers. Uh, granted, just with the Deanston 15 at 5, that was exceptional. It was, yeah. That man's an ear one. Yeah, pretty good one. No, we yeah. actually working in front of the What a distillery tour, enjoying Deanston cast with folk. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, it was good to say. Up in Aberdeen, obviously the, the roots of Canon here, so uh, it was quite nice to. Oh, I was doing a tasting up in Aberdeen and uh, we went to see the old site of where the, the shop was in, in the Nethercut Gate and stuff. So You'd have remembered the original shop, didn't you? I wasn't there, I loved it. No, it was good. Uh, and then the old uh, Wallace Tower as well, where was it? it was, Dismantled and built, uh, rebuilt elsewhere in Aberdeen. So we went looking for that on the 
Friday morning um, so we filmed it and took some photographs and stuff because that was one that used to be on the label of the Pataki side so oh, yeah, pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really interesting and you got a taste of an old Helaman, the Helaman yes that was a cracking drama yeah. okay so we'll go on to number three number three so where are we going to this is a huge talking point in the, the pronunciation of this one. Uh, so it is Blingiri, but some people are Blingiri. Again, when we first started, there's a little bit going Blingaria, you've got an Ochroys, you've got an Ochintoshin. I wasn't quite that bad. So yes, yeah, a 12 year old whiskey, uh, 54.9% alcohol. Uh, this one as well is matured in white port, which is a one of the using our sister company Springbank. We're buying in all the cash for Springbank for Care and Rain, so we do tag onto them if they're placing orders. We can use them for re racking some of the Care and Rain range where needed. And it's not just where needed, it's, just, it's a bit of variation wise as well. Because, say, if we are buying 10 casks from one distillery, and they all come in at bourbon, bourbon casks and they're all the same vintage. If we sort of bottle one year apart, they are quite of like similarities. So we put a few into port, rum, sherry and stuff, just to vary it up a bit as well, which is, it really works. Ruth's got bronchitis there. It's a first one she's in there. Sorry to hear that, Ruth. Um, this might actually cure you, you never know. That's it. But I think as far as I know, Grant, um, you've, you've been here a lot longer than I have, but I, I don't remember it doing any white port um, cast for anything. Certainly not. Certainly not. It's usual, yeah, ruby ports and stuff like that. Ruby tonies, like yeah. but not white port. Um, no, so it works. So it's a uh, three years in the, the white port. And again, you you know you've got that the fruity note is there. There's a nice sort of sweet note to it. Quite jam like. You know, it gives it a jammy, marmalade mm. note to it. It's a. It's a bit like this flavour builds up in the screen there as well. So we sort of hint a savoury note to it. Quite zesty as well. I found. We're also trying to find the perfect flavour wheel. This is what every week when we're whenever we're doing our tasting notes, we, we do a, a rate at the end what we think each part is. But we're, we're looking for the perfect wheel where we can get an even amount mm -hmm. on each one. We all think long row. We think there's going to be a long row. Some there's going to be one that's going to be. A, uh, we'll, we'll find one one day, but I think long row's got the potential to be. A, so just get all that balance with the, the peaty smokiness and the fruitiness and stuff. So. We've just got our um, Denzel Smith has just clarified it. No, we've never done a whiteboard. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> he knows a lot about the company. <laughs> Certainly does. So it's no, so it's something a bit different. And again, this one is um, we were talking about earlier on. It's horses for courses. You know, you know people. Some people love bourbon cats. Some people love sherry. Some people love pea. This is the bit of the kind of left field one, which is, is quite different. It's probably more the kind of modern style. And I actually look back on the notes as why we, for those who don't know, we, we do a process called re-racking where we'll take the spirit from one cask and move it to another. And kind of the question that was asked earlier about the quality of cask that we're receiving, it's happened, having to have the, I'll start again, ha, ha, we need to do it more often. <laughs> because the, as much as, as you want to, if the cask is no good, then the spirit's not going to develop. Um, and I think we were, we were actually talking about um, with Carly as well to do a post quite soon to kind of to showcase, like, you know, we've got casks, you know, we one a big, a big thing we've got here is trying to get space in our warehouses because our sister companies are producing a bit more. We're obviously buying a lot and we've, we've, we've got stock that's off site. We need to get it here to evaluate. And it's not just we're buying it now, it's stuff we've bought many, many years ago too. But obviously we need room to get it. And recently we got around, I think, three to four hundred casks delivered over the last couple of months um, that we kind of earmarked. There were some absolutely fantastic that came in. There's a few that are going to get released very soon. But it's still a staff are moaning me about that, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the production team were too happy of having to take about 300 samples. So um, I did go and apologise to them. Um, got Still got lots of wine and chocolate, chocolate. to get uh, um, I did promise that, I think. But uh, there is a lot of the, the cast that came up, and some of them, which are even 10 years old, actually, some of the flavours are quite good from them, but a lot of them, the cast wasn't that great, so we have to try and work on it. And I think that's what separates kind of like independent bottlers like ourselves. 
um, you know, we're fortunate we've got that, that um, the history of cats that we purchased, where it's, it's very difficult maybe for, for newer independent bottlers who might need to, to purchase straight away and bottle, uh, to, to buy and then bottle straight away, where we actually can develop the cats. We can actually um, look after them and, and basically put our spin on them. But is that uniqueness for being a single cat's cast gen for the authentic release? And even though playing about with the original collection with bourbon sherry or bourbon and Madeira and stuff like that. And yes, it's all that kind of, the, you think back in the day, blends was a huge part of the industry. But what we are doing is you know, playing about with that kind of massive blender of what works really well together, a bit of variation and, and making that whiskey unique, um, which it's certainly working and it'll make a huge talking point as well. And, uh, you can see when you walk into the Edinburgh, London shop, right? Any good whiskey shop, they've got a good selection um, of the carrying heads in the European markets and stuff with the original collection. Uh, there is that variety there. It's okay, you've got the silly names there, but you've got that different cast type and maturation, uh, which is, yeah. It's... And even like Glengarry, which we talked about with Dove in the previous one, Glengarry is another one of these distilleries. It's, it's actually we've done a lot of kind of pricey bottles, a lot of not just ourselves, you see from other independents too, from themselves as well. The Glengarry has become pretty impressive whiskey. You know, it's, it's getting more of a name. Um, and we did a uh, bourbon cast not that mm -hmm. long ago, which was, which was excellent. I look back at the notes as to why we changed this one, and um, basically we have to assess them first. And sometimes it, it, there were sister casts that were absolutely perfect. Yeah. We let them mature on. Just this one needed a bit of a boost. You know, um, it, it was just there was nothing wrong with it per se. It, after like that sort of time in the cask, if it's if it's been in a cask for like 10, 11, 8, 9, 10 years and there's nothing really happening with it, you've got to make that decision made. Because you could leave it for another five, ten years and still something might not happen with it. So with that one, we made the, the decision and that's been now just under four years it was in the white port. But say I can mind years ago going through the some of the whiskies that come in, the samples come in, and you're like First of all, the visual look at them, very, very pale in colour. Obviously, you can't judge it just on the colour. Uh, so, obviously, taking the taste and the flavour of it. And sometimes we do find whiskies that are very, very light, more or less water light in colour. But the quality of the whiskey is actually superb. So, it's trying to. A lot of people can go by the colour and dark whiskey perceives a better quality, but sometimes it's not always the case. And, We've got a question from Amy. It's what happens to the barrels that are no longer good for flavour and development? Um, generally, in the past, it's always been that our production team will, will basically slice them in half, sell them for like garden, like for, for, a, for potting um, plants and whatnot. But as we kind of mentioned a moment ago, that there's kind of a shortage of wood. And I believe that um, we've actually been getting cats taken back. I think Finlay, our production director, and, and, and a Gavin, um, our production manager as well, I think, they actually had cats that were recharged. Re I think they, they said so. It works really well. It, yeah, you know, it, it's a good set. You know, you get to kind of um, reuse these cats as well. And the recharring kind of gives it a bit of a different process too that kind of opens up the wood. Um, so you then start to get flavours that are maybe lost in it. Um, it won't obviously be as um, strong as the, like the first fill or whatnot, but there's been some cracking recharged casks over the years. Uh, Obviously, more so, but the spring might say that the 97 vintages are hugely talked about with the, the recharge cast. Um, so, it, and it, look at the cost, okay, the shortage of cast as well, but then the cost you're buying an empty sherry butt, you know, sending away to get recharred uh, and bringing that cast back to life, you're still getting maybe a couple of maturations out of it. So, it's a uh, it's better for the industry as well. You yeah. think, and and the planet too. It's planet. Yeah, all about sustainability. It's something about nowadays about oh, sustainability. We're always looking at ways of, that's one of the reasons why we got rid of the cartons years ago and um, try and minimise the amount of plastic we use and that's using glass bottles for the, the tasting packs and stuff. Um, it's a huge part and even the still production wise, uh, we're always looking at ways of, you know, just, Managing the planet, shall we say, and uh, yeah. lighting, what have you, in the office wise, the whole what less go back to everything, car wise, the company cars with uh, hybrids and stuff. So. But the pedal bikes, so pedal that's bikes. <laughs> um, 
but no, it, it's something we've got a responsibility we've got to do as well. And um, as I said, even it, it's small things, we're, but we try and kind of try and do as much as we can with that as well. Like even the amount of cardboard that was used for like the packaging as well. I mean, it's, it's a big. When you seen our warehouses where the packaging materials, uh, it was mental. Uh, so, you know, they didn't get rid of the cartons, even though they came in flat packed, uh, in a lot of pallets, and uh, certainly Norman's a lot happier. Yeah, I think, I think Norman's a lot happier in production as well with that. So, then we'll move on to drum number four. And drum number four comes from Balblair Distillery. Um, this one's 10 years old and it's been in a rum barrel since November 2020. And it's at a, a nice low strength of 60% exactly here. Although it doesn't taste like 60%. It taste like it. No, it, there's the old Jedi mind trick that I shouldn't have actually said 60%. Although, in fairness, if you've got a tasting pack in front of you, you'll be able to see that. But um, Balblair, again, it's one of these distilleries which really good quality. Mm -hmm. they've, all, they've always had that. Um, and at the time, we got these rum casts from Barbados. Now, Cadnades, we've been bottling rum our entire history as well. Um, and it's always kind of, whenever we do bottle rum casts, we then try and reuse that. We'll put a whiskey into it as well. This, these ones actually were what we, we, these were bought in rum casks. Um, our um, production director, director production, Finley, Finley Ross, um, gets like rum casks, as Grant said earlier, for Springbank and Cocairn and Longo and Hazelburn. And we'll tag along. We, it, it's obvious it's more efficient as well. You know, we've targeted certain distilleries and certain casks that we feel need a certain flavour profile. And with this one, we thought it needed a bit more of a kind of bolder, kind of sweeter uh, kind of flavour, which Barbados from can, can certainly do. Now, we don't have the name of the actual distillery, um, but any kind of rum connoisseurs maybe can take a guess at it as well. But with rum cast, especially after four years too, there can be a danger it overpowers. I don't think this has. No, you've still got that balance of the whiskey and rum working really, really well together. Um, and you also don't know the rum cast there or parts in, but say, we're not at the bottom of much rum. But if you come back 15, 20 years ago, we'd probably, 50% of what we bottled was rum and then sort of uh, whiskey wise as well. So it was like a huge proportion of rum casks buying in. Uh, if you've seen our portfolio back in the day, it was like a lot of Port Morant rums and stuff like that. And, uh, so we had all these empty rum casks, uh, ideal for re racking or spring bike stealing and stuff. But uh, we're not bottling as much rum these days, so we're uh, purchasing in some of the rum casks. It's also awesome. probably bottling more whiskey as well, though it's the kind of. It's the and then the other thing with that too, rum has obviously become more popular as well over the years. That we, 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 we've, been doing, means, yeah. we've been we've been investing a lot in rum as well over the years too, and especially the last few years, we've got our portfolio, we've got inventory up, sorry. So we've been kind of buying a lot more different styles as well, and we've even been like doing the re-racking with uh, with those two. Like I think the most famous one we did was the uh, four square, four and it was in the ex Kilkerran port cask. Mm -hmm. That was unbelievable, that one. Um, it's always a slight risk when you yeah. do it with that one, but, but it worked out. It worked. And, and, yeah, and it was one of those ones that we've, um, we've always kind of talked about. We need to try and replicate something like that, but we never ever have. And I think that we are going to try and experiment. Find the, yeah, find the right one. It's, it's, you know, it's, it, it, there's a huge gamble to these things, but uh, we're using the experience of the whiskey we know, the cast we know, and what will work really well together. Stephen says, very true, Grant. Our big tent illustrates the point perfectly regarding colouring. Hello, yeah. Omar. It was in our big years ago, I remember, when uh, I think the taste notes was uh, who needs colour, what needs colour, is going to taste as good as this, because it was really, really pale. Because I first got the sample in, I was like, oh, this is going to be young, youthful, and, and mature stuff. But it was absolutely really, really good. And I bottled it. And I mean, doing the tasting notes for that one, it's like, who? We don't need colour that tastes as good as this. Ruth's asking, you've got to have your own bottle and call it cadenets. Well, it's actually a good segue to to like what kind of the, the, the sort of future and the plans yeah, we've got going just now. <laughs> um, we have been doing obviously a lot of investment over the years and it's always been the plan, um, like even before I joined the company nearly 10 years ago now, 
that we're trying to make cat beds on its own. So we've got our sister company, Springbank, Kilcairn, but now we're getting to this this stage now where it's um, we now have our shop, we've got a warehouse, we've got our, a bottling hall. It's not fully functioning the bottling hall yet, but um, eventually we'll probably be online there as well. We're going to do some stuff in it. We've got a bar, a blending lab, um, the offices as well. So it means we're kind of self-contained and it means that we can if you've, if you've been to Campbelltown recently, there's been, if you've not been for maybe a few months, you'll see some, Come on, some, some good changes, you know, and, and it's really good, you know, I think everything's been pretty positive as well. Really? Really, really, yeah, um, the feedback we've been getting has been amazing as well. Um, it, it, even just brightening up the street as well. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's the Bottom Street, it's kind of, we've got a lot of branding in it just now with the Cadden Head Street and stuff, so, uh, but you know, the way they'll see some down uh, the back of the Bottom Street, fantastic experience. Uh, more different cast line up as well. Um, even that, just, there's a lot of visitors coming down just for doing the kind of way those tastings. And yeah, feedback's fantastic with the fact that it's all self contained down in Ball Street. You get down and get your, you know, six grams. You see it getting pulled straight from the cast. And if you're interested in buying them after the tasting, they'll be pulled and drawn straight in front of you and labelled up uh, in, the, in the bottom hall and stuff. So, no, it's a really good. And even for the on the Waltz Festival stuff, it'll be used as well. And also, the emails went out recently regarding the courtyard and stuff, but we'll talk about that as well. Okay. Yeah, we've had a bit of time going here, You're using up all the part of here. <laughs> Stephen's saying there as well, he's coming in a month's time. Uh, Bell's on at the Canheads Club Warehouse Station. We'll look forward to seeing there, Stephen. Um, also, in another uh, point, he said on the other end of the spectrum, the, the, the colour conversation you had, um, we did the, the Ord, which is in PX for the, the club bottle and recently for the, she, the sherry pack. Um, and he said that it, it looks as if it's going to be a total sherry bomb, mm -hmm. but it's actually not overpowered. It's actually got like a lot of kind of character. It's not too much of the characteristics. And I think it's a good point not to judge it on its colour. Yeah. And, and even earlier when I mentioned some of the, the, the casks that came in and they look really, they almost look like that. Some of them are pretty good. You know, like it, it, it's, if the distillate can be good, and even though the wood might not have too much of an impact on it, the wood still got something good about it. Some of them obviously don't, you know, and it's still a bit harsh, it still needs a bit, but sometimes you, you can get like a really light coloured whiskey that, that's excellent. So it's never a case of colour, age, you know, um, you can get great whiskies at, at four years old, you can get rough whiskies at 40 years old. It doesn't matter. Well, the, the peak of whiskey as well, because, you know, it's, some whiskey works really well at young age and, you know, does whiskey always improve? But age, no, there is probably a tipping point uh, for maturing, and that's where getting the samples of the casks and seeing how they're maturing away, and, and just through experience, okay, that cask can mature on for a few years yet. No, that's now it's time to be bottled. Bottling something at sixty percent alcohol, it actually melts in the glass. Yeah, it's you know there's no harsh bit. You know, again on this one, but even sitting in the glass for a few times, it's just let it open up and breathe. Uh, it works really well. It's got that kind of lovely, it's got the lovely kind of ripe bananas as well. It's it's got the, the, the rum characteristics, but not just a case of it can be overpowered by rum. And in that occasion as well, we have done um there has been occasions where we've re-racked the cask and then we've had to like maybe re-rack it again because it's maybe went too far. So then you'll maybe use like a refill bourbon hogshead or barrel yeah. to try and Kind of tame it back a bit, try and kind of bring it back to more of a whiskey stage. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes you'll get like certain ones that will do that are maybe big sherry bombs, and there's maybe there's not a huge amount of whiskey characteristic to it, but there's scope for that. But sometimes you make it too, too far, too much, and you want it tastes more like rum than anything, so you want to try and bring it back slightly. Um, Ruth, you made a comment there that I think I'm going to ignore. <laughs> Claiming I turned 50 recently there, so that's it. Oh, well, I'm 50. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Carmen ce celebrated a birth big birthday there recently. Oh, was a big birthday? Yeah, yeah. 30. 30. 30. 10. Anywho. Um, yeah, that's, that's enough of that one. But, um, but the ball player again, um, and it's, it, it's, it's actually the distillery that, for independent bottling wise, it's very difficult to come by. You know, we've still got casks of it, but it's not that we've got warehouse and warehouses of it. 
And when we get um, sent lists from brokers, anything that you do see from the likes of, like, especially the ball player, they are pretty expensive. You know, it's 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 a. There's names there that are very very. You know, mm-hmm. I've got a premium name behind it yeah. as well. So, uh, and that's when obviously you're seeing the, the stock listings in for these brokers. You know, in many companies jumping at these casks and the price uh, is something you've got to look at as well. And it's if you're buying parcels of casks as well, you've got to think or be. What other companies are buying them as well? Is the same sort of parcels going on through the market at the same time? We've got a fortunate position we've maybe sat on it for a, a few years um, and then sort of develop it as well. So, well, again, that kind of goes back to we were generally we're always like that, where we're fortunate that the way the business has been set up over the years that you know we're, we're not in a position where it has to be pushy, where we've got to get it in straight away. Now, obviously, it's got to be done in a, in a correct way, but even some of the, the some of the pricing just recently, you know, we you'd have to wait fifteen years before it was usable. But you can actually see slightly in the last of maybe twelve to eighteen months, the pricing is coming down. Maybe not so much with the likes of a Bow Blair mm-hmm. or, for instance, like maybe some of the bigger names. But like even <laughs> the last week, <laughs> the last week, <laughs> yeah, that's simple enough. Um, but the you can see like even. It was getting silly some of the pricing, mm-hmm. um, but it's nice to see that it start kind of maybe reset itself the market slightly, which is good for us. Yeah. There's more availability, and you can see some cats, some newer to well, some distilleries that haven't been seen for a while are coming back on the market or coming back in the mm-hmm. uh, to buy. Maybe still a bit higher price, but it shows that it's starting to. Let's do it before like three bought or something, you know, a couple of years ago at X price, and then we've. Bought some same distillery and bought it a couple of years later, and it's like, oh, you a big price jump. But in yeah, we bought that reasonable price, and that's new cash we purchased recently at said price. So that has to reflect on the price in the on the market as well. So it, it's I go on about this a lot, and even though you're an independent bottler, we're so dependent on what's what's available, what's in the market, what we've got available, and you know if you look at the the prices. We, we can't just go 10 year old is this price no. 15 year old is this price because you know like um we could put a 10 year like for instance we've got the tyranny we're fortunate enough we've got plenty of stock of it the, the, the price that we paid for it you know means that we can put it out for 45 pounds you know the ball player was more expensive it's also to replace that if we're being honest we would have to charge three four times yeah. you know like which we don't want to do we're wanting people to open it and drink it we've still got stock of it you know that we can hold on and hopefully the will prices will come down if we can get some more in the future but we're just it, it, you have to weigh up everything like and um, we'll probably talk about the last one as well for that kind of reason too um but we, we can't have a set price maybe years ago when a lot of the casks were pretty much the same price you know but now it's like this is you get a four-year-old that's actually 10 times the price yeah, that's 12 years old come back 20 25 years ago it was just the price itself at one year strength. It's, that's the way the pricing was back in the day. Uh, it didn't matter the name or the product. It was all done on sort of whatever age you're buying it in that. So it, you can see that back in the day when a lot of people do talk about the old kind of prices and stuff, you know, but it was, it was the age and strength. So nowadays, yes, there's a demand for bigger names and stuff. And ones maybe only go for, you know, in uh, blends and stuff like that. You might you might be able to buy in at more reasonable price and stuff, so that has got to reflect in the, in the market. So we move on to the next one. Next one. So where are we going? I'm going to Royal Bracklet. Uh, so this is the Royal Bracklet. It's a 14-year-old whiskey and 52.3% alcohol. And from I'm getting all the kind of cast types. You said this is a what you go <laughs> the <laughs> Pinot Noir. Uh, so from the, the Burgundy region. So again, that was a one we sort of we knew it was initially the taste the notes can be or can say it was red wine so asking to do a bit of research right where what red wine was so back checking back the records and then it was like Pinot Noir so yeah, Pinot Noir from the Burgundy region uh, yeah I think we're getting better with the records and things like that mm-hmm. you know it was 2019 this was re-racked and that's even before that used to be like we've got more variation of different cats so we've got Pinot Noir from, from different regions different cut you know like 
a, I know Springbank are quite a bit, I think they've some from New Zealand, New Zealand stuff, you know, yeah. um, and we we got some of those casks as well. But I believe this one was actually, they were, oh God, but they bought it for a longer rate, this one. And I think we tagged along with a few of the casks. Um, but on the on the stock, it just said red wine. We used to have that as well, with just like sherry. What kind of sherry? Sherry. <laughs> so, you know, so people want to, want to know. Yeah. We want to know as well. Uh, so the general public would. Uh, yeah, back in the day, it was like sherry. And I uh, what, what type of sherry? Uh, but, you know, going back 20, 30 years ago, it was mainly all of those sherry. Yeah. So the notes were kept sherry. The chances are 90% of it will be from all of But because of the, there's not as many people drinking sherry nowadays, the people start looking at what other types of sherry cats can be purchased. And they go, oh, there's a, actually a variety of different cat, sherry cats on the market. And then that's where then people want to know. We want to know ourselves as well, because it does have an influence, because a lot of people know sherry has been all the also, but what has PX got an influence to it? Uh, what has a phenol sherry got in? It's relatively recently that we've only been doing like Montiato, Manzanilla, Palo Cortado, um, and Finos. It's, well, we, we might have bought, like, I remember we did an Aaron many years ago, maybe about seven or eight years ago that was in Fino, but I think it actually was purchased in the Fino cast. You know, I don't think we put it into Fino. Um, just probably, you know, so to, we, we have been experimenting with a bit more cast. And it's quite good though. It, it, it does give a different. And, you know, like uh, from the different varieties, I've been really loving the Palo Cortado mm. stuff. Yeah, it works. It's yeah. really, really, it's really good. Um, obviously, they've all, you know, but that particular, I've really been impressed with the, the Palo Cortado yeah. stuff. You know, you yourself, you, a lot of people do ask us, what's your style of whiskey? Yes, like I mean, years ago it was like, I like to have repeated whiskies, and then we phase that like sh heavy sherry whiskies, but there is a time, just a good quality of bourbon matured. But I do enjoy a nice sherry whiskey as well. Uh, but if I go to it, probably a good quality bourbon one. But. And wine is my one. Wine can be funny. Mm -hmm. You know, when we did the tasting for this one, Royal Bracco is generally quite a good spirit as well. Yeah. <laughs> we had a cracking bourbon cast recently too. And, um, with this one, if I'm perfectly honest, sometimes when when we're doing it, sometimes you you have lower expectations than, than, than with certain whiskies than other ones. It can be funny with red wine mm -hmm. cats sometimes. And I think a lot of people can be, but this one really surprised me. It wasn't too dominant as well. Um, there is a slight amount of tannins, you can get that. Feeling it's a red wine cats, but it's not just a, a big kilo in the water in the glass that you've got there. You know, it, it, it has got kind of nice fruit behind it as well, kind of cola cubes. Um, and it, it's one that you could have one or two because again with something with wine casks um maybe one one glass would yeah. be enough this one's actually quite it's actually quite good you know you can even even just try it again but no it's still as good as i remember it mm -hmm. i commend well, <laughs> in the taste notes for this one uh having it sit in the glass and experimenting this one with water and seeing how it opens up with it does become much more fruitier with the, the wee splash of water um, and it is i always like to experiment is sitting in the glass, let it breathe, a couple of drops of water. You know, you, you do get people or one or two drops of water, uh, see how it changes. And then I say before about when we're doing the different ranges, you know, if we're sampling whiskey in the office prior to picking for ranges, it's like some whiskey actually do work better with water, but they might be earmarked for the original collection. Um it's it's all different, you know you're selfish. There's, there's no rule of thumb. Um, it varies a lot of the time. And um, Justin Adams said, I think it's lucky as last year and get into the vault. <laughs> um, I was thinking, when did we talk about the cat? <laughs> <laughs> well, for the club members as well, they probably noticed that they got an email this week um, regarding the club uh, ticket sales, which will go on next Wednesday. Wednesday, yep. Yep, 2 p.m., I believe. Oh, I'm not sure. You yep, it's Carlos yeah. Norton there, yeah. that's right. And that will be from the Cadenates Experience site. Wait for the nod there, Carlos, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Make sure the club members are all signed in, uh, registered. Uh, if you're not registered, get, you know, get logged in prior to that and say, uh, voice. It was a brilliant day last year. And uh, fortunately, I don't know. fortunately, somebody missed it. It's the first time you probably missed a day through illness in yeah. your whole life as well. 
Um, you were pretty ill. Um, yeah, it was cold, well, I think, was it? It, it, it tastes negative, but yeah. I've never seen you like that before. No. Um, and the night before as well, we've got a, a Cadet Club tasting as well. Um, we'll have more details of that um, in the future, like upcoming, but we'll have tickets available for club members too. So um, we'll get the, the venue and everything confirmed in the format. I think somebody asked if we're doing a quiz that we did last year. Oh, um, man, so I can't <laughs> my question. Uh, we got Grant's questions, he got booed off the stage, I think, last year. So, But I, we'll, we'll, we'll think, we've not decided the format yet. We will do something, I think. We're, we're going to do something a bit more informal again. Um, because it's more of a kind of relaxing night. We don't want it to be too too serious. Um, we want people to kind of get club members to get together. And especially the night before the, the, the actual courtyard event too. It worked really well last year. You know, apart from you, probably need to go to the hospital. But apart from that, it actually worked really, really well. Um, and we've still got, we've still got the, the Malls Festival in May to go through first. So, um, I can barely think two weeks ahead of myself, so we'll not get... Um, we'll, 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 we'll try and think of a format that can be a bit kind of fun and more interactive as well like last time too. Yeah, it's a, you know, trying to be a chilled out night and it is a bit of fun and uh, not too serious. Uh, it's all about having fun, enjoying and trying some different whiskies. That's just what the whole Cadenet experience is all about, is, uh, is a bit of fun, uh, you know, different whiskies. Everybody loves the whiskies we do and talks about it and stuff, so uh, it's again, reward the people who make that effort to come down and see us and do the beer tasting experience and uh, come down for the open day even the, the malt festival that's lost plan for the that week as well you've probably seen there's tastings throughout the week it's not just about a one day event now for carrying heads it's the whole week so well it's um called celebrated its 20th anniversary this 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 year so and um, during the, the festival as well we always shared the friday which probably will still happen again next year but because it's their anniversary we thought we'd give them a day themselves. But instead of just having half a day, we went for the whole week. We went greedy. So from the Monday to the Saturday, we've got events on all the time. So it gives more people a chance. I think it's quite good because we've got a warehouse tasting on every day. You know, the the, the Thursday, we've got a kind of an old archive tasting. The, the Friday, we've got the big tasting as well. So it's still keeping the traditional um, ones as well. But hopefully it'll give people a bit more chance. to. So you're not rushing to do three or four tastings at once, you know, it, it, it makes it a bit more spread. Uh, with no accommodation, it's hard to come by and canvas on for that week, so some people are coming for the start of the week, they might not be able to find accommodation for the end, towards the end of the week, so they're coming to start. And, uh, so yeah, it's hel helping out for that as well, for the accommodation side, I think, in canvas on. Um, it's, hopefully the weather will be as, as good it's as that. better than it is just now. Um, anyway. I'm not going to moan. No, I'm not going to moan. Positive. That's it. Um, so, Mike Roberts said, Congratulations on the new tasting pack presentation. Thanks, Mike. Um, it, there was something quite quirky about the old. You know, at the time we started doing the, the packs, it was during COVID as well. And we had to get our hands on, you know, it was the old. It was the. the the envelopes, wasn't it? And the kind of the, the, the jiffy bags, the jiffy bags with the kind of yeah. the sort of strange uh, plastic ones, which served a purpose and they were good for a while. But I think we need to be a bit more polished now, and it does look a lot better. And I think they have become increasingly popular too. Um, from that, and even seeing um, the, the, I said at the time, this is why I'm always wrong. Online tastings won't last that long. Four years later, we're still <laughs> doing them. That's it. That's, people do ask just after the COVID when we started opening up, going to shows again, you know, are you still going to continue with the, the online tastings? And that's with our tasting packs. We will do some online tastings, some will be short videos and stuff. Just to vary it up. Okay, you don't want to listen to himself and Cameron every release. Um, you certainly don't. <laughs> Uh, but no, and it keeps getting the, the shop staff involved. We have tried one where we put Edinburgh and London into the same sort of video. Technology wasn't quite with us that night where the Edinburgh Wi-Fi wasn't the best. No, I know, but I mean, like, I think in, in, like, the guys in Edinburgh are doing the tasting tonight. Um, I, I know the guys in London have been trying to, have been doing ones as well. So, and in Campbell, some as well, you'll see the, the, the ones there doing the warehouse tastings too. So it's, it's good. We're, we're trying to get up more and about with, with different styles of tastings as well. And I think Edmund's going to be doing a lot more of them pretty soon as well. Yeah. Um, 
So it's good. It's quite good tonight. They've got their 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 taste, and it's getting a lot of positive feedback mm -hmm. as well. People are looking forward. Yeah, it's funny. It's a uh, tall will be in Europe tonight. Uh, got a good taste with those two as well. So yeah. Everything doesn't matter who it is, just the will. But do you know what? Also, add that all these bottles that we're trying tonight can, are only available from our Canadian shops. So you can only get them from either the Campbelltown, London, or Edinburgh shops as well. So these are all exclusive to them. There's the sales pitch. The sales pitch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm sure majority of you know about the, the, the three shops and stuff. And in fact, we do different tastings and stuff. And Edinburgh will hopefully uh, soon be doing tasting stuff as well. So watch this space. Oh, small tastings in the Edinburgh shop or venues within Edinburgh as well. So. Ruth says we want Carmen. But you're, you're too late, Ruth. I've been your comment earlier. That's it. That's, yeah, <laughs> you're marked. You're marked now. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's going to be a busy malls festival as well. We're looking forward to, I can't believe it's next month. Five weeks, isn't it? No, no. Four, five, four, five. Yeah. We'll be organised for it. <laughs> oh, we're only joking. We're, 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 we actually are fully organised. Um, Is the line up ready? Just about. Just about. Just about. Um, we'll move on to the next round now. <laughs> I think I need another one after that. I think I've a few comments in this one. Maybe. Yeah, this one seems to be. I've been hearing like obviously some people get their packs um, prior to this, and I've, I've I've heard some feedback from from ones doing tastings as well. And this is probably the one. If you looked at it at the beginning, would be. I don't mean this in the disrespect to it. It's probably the one that you wouldn't really be expecting to be what it is. Um, but this ten-year-old teenager. Um, again, butchering the pronunciation of it as well. Um, fifty five point three percent. This had been in a, a in a sherry butt its entire life. Now, we had to put in a sherry butt because we don't know if it's in a bottle. When we purchased it, um, all we get is butt. So um, we, we we knew it was a sherry one, but I'll be honest with you, it's probably all. It's, it's, it's got it's got that all rose kind of taste to now well enough when I remember we, we bought these a couple of years ago and we, we quite a lot of tearing coming in and the sister casks of it it's funny with this one the, the, the other like with ones with barrels and bog sets and these ones came in butts and the other two came in all this colour and I honestly thought that the guys had taken the wrong sample but are you sure this is somebody else's sample but fortunately enough one of the butts that we got was pretty active still the other ones went, funnily enough, actually, the one that was quite light, really good as well. You know, um, quite that peppery, you know, mm -hmm. quite, it's, it's quite good for blending as well, Tinnenich, it's because it's got that nice kind of peppery, you know, that helps to kind of boost the blend. Um, and we've used it in blends before in the past too. Um, but this one was like quite a surprise. You had 10 years and all of so, okay, is it fresh? Most likely it probably is. But there's again that balance. It, it, sherry notes there, but it's not sulfury. Is it actually kind of the worry if something is in a fresh sherry cask? Is it going to be sulfury? Is it going to be too much sherry influence? But not on this one. It's actually really well balanced. It, we were quite surprised with, with this one. It shouldn't really be surprised. It shouldn't be surprised. But it, again, we it was on a roll that day. You know, sometimes you get days where when you're doing a selection, it might take quite a while. You know, because you'll take different samples and try it. It's all right, it's not ready yet. Or that's really good. That's, some Sometimes you just get one of those days where, I think we've got like six like, in a row. It's like, I think we have to go, but we go back and try them again the next day. Because there's always that danger. That palate fatigue. You can, get, you can get palate fatigue so easily. And really, to be honest with you, most of the time you're doing a, you're doing a sampling session, you're just ruling out most ones. It's then trying to find out, you're, you're basically continuing to rule out samples and then you go, right, let's try this one. That's pretty good, you know, or like, <laughs> after six or seven, yeah, yeah, your palate's done. Yeah. You know, it's really difficult to, to judge. Obviously you can, you know, you, you can try ways mm -hmm. to try and so, but at one go, you know, it's very difficult to try six or seven different styles. Maybe if you're trying to find one style, you've got maybe 10, 15 mm -hmm. like bourbon cask, something or 10, 15 shade of the same distillery, same wood type, 
but to try different wood types, it, it's, it's almost, it, it's really difficult. That's a, a good talking point about our blending lab as well, when the, the great experience, uh, again, very, very positive feedback for our blending labs. It's another new thing we started a few months back. Uh, you can come down and do your own blending experience. So there's eight different cast types to sample away, and yes, there is a grain amongst it, but you're totally blind. You're sitting there and sampling away at the different cast types, and then you have to make up your own blend, and you bought your own 70 CL for the takeaway with you. You can have your picture on it or the Blending Lab logo, but fantastic. And people do comment as, oh, I'm not a big fan of, i say, Madeira or rum. It doesn't really work well to it, but you, you don't know you're doing this blind. And this is what the blenders do as well. They're sitting there blind and it's all about your own preference and what, what styles you like. And it's amazing to see the, the different combinations people come up with for the semi uh, Well, the, the very first group we had, well, the, one of the first groups we had, sorry, um, for doing the blending sessions, I, I went down to see them after, just this, how did it go? And it was a, a group of Swedes that were there. And first person said, really enjoyed it, but I wish you would tell us the cast times before. And I was like, all right, okay, well, why is that? He says, because rum and Sautern don't go together. And it was Andrew Wallace who was doing the, the taste and went, but you've put rum and Sautern together. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, yeah, so I have. <laughs> I was like, well, so you basically proved a wrong point there that if you had looked at them, you would have put them together. But doing it blind, I, think, I can't remember what the two components were. I think it was actually maybe that. But the components will also change as well. They can vary from time to time as well. So. And then people want to know which one's the green as well. So. But if it is a green, that's mm -hmm. sometimes it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a really good one and it's also a good kind of base for it as well but I think a lot of people have been having fun and I, actually I've seen a lot of comments actually then going that they've got a lot more respect for blenders now because it's not as easy it's as not it easy, no. it's not as simple um, and I think a lot of people just go oh that's easy <laughs> that's the and um, the it's got that kind of fudginess chocolatey uh, it's a crack and trap and from the sherry bats um, I balls that we get from this one. 420 balls. Okay. Actually, there was more than that, but yeah. um, 420 balls from this one. Um, it's 45 quid a, a ball as well, you know. I think I need to get one myself, yeah. actually. I think Gav's got his order in. I, I'd seen, yeah, I think Gav's asked Tony for his order as well. Um, but again, it, it's nice to see that kind of feedback, because you, you never know until somebody's tried it that, um, you, you, you put the, these together and you like to hope that, that somebody might like it. And it might not, but no, if you're not a sherry fan, this is not your whiskey. But, you know, as you said before, I used to be more of a sherry fan when I first started. Then I kind of went bourbon, but I do like a good sherry now and then. And uh, this will be a good one for a, for a Tuesday, for a Thursday night as well. It's about yeah, Tuesday yeah. night or Wednesday night or Monday night. Of course, I'm going to do that. Not at all. Ryan Coleman says he's pleasantly surprised by the and I think, I don't mean that some kind of keep going on about it, but there's a lot of big distilleries here, a lot of kind of good names, and, and I think maybe, as I say, when you're looking at the list, it's probably way down in people's expectations yeah. for the rest of it, so it's nice to see that, and it's actually, these are the whiskies that are, I don't mean to sound, it's easier to pick a good one of this than a Maybe a, an Arbeg or a Lafroy or, the, or just a Springbank or a Bullmore because when you pick one of those distilleries, you know people's expectations are up here. You know they're, they're, they're way up. Mm -hmm. So when you do like the Tenerich, pronounce it with five different styles so far, and um, the the expectations are down. So when they try it and they like it, they're really. But if somebody tries a Springbank or Bullmore or whatever. And they like it, they're like, oh, I expected that. Or if it's slightly below their expectations, they're a disappointment. So it is quite, there, there's actually a lot less pressure yeah. on these ones and, and doing like a big name when I think people think it's the opposite. Yeah, this is a good talking point with the, the price of this one because some comments we've made in the past, you know, you could get away with selling that at 65, 60 quid. But it's, obviously we know the price we've bought it in at and put it on the market. So you've got to be true market with a fairness to it as well. And people do respect candidates for the price instruction. Um, we're not silly prices and stuff. So yeah, you know, 
yeah, you could probably get away with selling that fifty five quid, sixty quid, but it's not. It's, a, it's not. Our, it's not the way that we, we do business, and it's not. Quote, of course, for some things that are, that are maybe rare, you know, obviously, like if there's a, if there's a lost distillery that we've only got one or two can't slay, unfortunately, you know, you're never going to see those again, and you have it. Would be, value. It would be negligent to then just go let's sell it for a hundred quid for a, a little mill or whatever. Oh, you need to sell it for more than that anyway, but you know, um. Oh, like the art bag. We, we don't have warehouses of art bags or, and the price that you see to replace those, you know, you're, you're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds, half a million, you know, to half a million to a million you see for these. I mean, that's our game now. You know, we, we, you would actually, my job would be easier just selling it on, like being a broker, selling mm-hmm. cats, but we don't do that. That's not our game. Um, and while it'll be, some of them will be more expensive, it, will still be better value than like, we, we, we try and do it in a way where we're not more expensive than the rest either and this one too we've got some good stock of, of tnn and the price that we bought it at because i think we, there, there's questions going wait a minute you've got a, a 10 year old for 45 and you've got a, a, an eight year old for for 70. Seven, yeah. and again it's more rarity as well like this is what we'll go into the next one in a minute, but it's the, the, the there's not a lot of that. Yep. It's rarity. It's the the market value of it as well. You've got kind of better consideration too, and everything that we do is not going into shareholder pockets. I mean, it's going into investment. We're investing in camp. We're investing in the courtyard. We're investing in the the, the Baldwin Hall, the 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 one in Bolgham Street as well, the the, the warehouse, and you know, um, every time you can buy a camera something. Yeah, I was speaking to a few guys. Uh, when I was coming out of the office earlier on, they are booked in for the teasing tomorrow. And, you know, there's comment already that every time they come back, there's something different here. And, you, yeah, you'll see the, the site where the new bottling is, is going to be, the hall's got to go and stuff. You know, the bottling hall have got down Bond Street, new warehouse and stuff. Every time, and that's what we're always looking at. What can we do differently to attract people back down to Camelton uh, to change that experience slightly? And, uh, yeah, this is a huge... That you think we're all that money we're making is going back into investment and employing yeah. more people and stuff as well. I get a lot of good comments on this one, Grant. No, it's it's okay. I, can, I keep on laughing. There's the, some notes in front of me, and there's like the cast number uh, 706181. You're thinking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this number can't comprehend, you know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how many we've been doing a year. Yeah, yeah, you know, that would take us about three decades to get that kind of number. <laughs> no. It's your volume, somebody used to say that. It's interesting to see with the cast numbers and stuff. So The one, um, I think it's a long morning that we own, it's for Chevrolet, and it's like, obviously they'll, probably, they'll have it in their central warehouse, but one of the, the cast numbers, it's like 11 million and something. It's like, I don't really know how many casks that, that involves, you know, and that's like probably a year, yeah. um, you know, like how many casks have been filled in production. Mm-hmm. I couldn't actually tell you how many sister distilleries do in a year, but it's certainly not anywhere near that, you know. Um, you won't get past three numbers anyway, put it that way. No, shall we go on to the opposite? Will you reuse the cask? Um, yes, we will, actually. Um, when I've got a kind of list of re racking that we do, um, so this one is going to get reused, I think. Oh, uh, I could be wrong, but I think I've got two. It's kind of younger, quite a lot of like bourbon liquid. There's two that the, the wood was too big. So I've got the two hogsheads of liquid. I think going into this one, if I can remember right, because it was a, when I did the things a couple of months ago. But I'm pretty sure that's what's getting used for it. Yeah, I mean, it's... don't quote. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it, it's, it's liquid or Ben Rennes. I can't there's remember. A lot of life that cask. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's something. Sitting there, if we don't use it for re racking, then our sister company will use it for spring mm-hmm. racking. Something, so. so, yeah, no, it's a yeah, you're reusing a cast, so there's still got a lot of life in them. Yeah, they use them. Yeah. On to the next one, next one. So, okay. yeah, it's a every year we do sort of big bottle yeah, or it's steel. That's a nice thing. Uh, Still problem. <laughs> uh, so yeah, spring back long ago, here's the one. Yeah, we do try and maybe 
at least one product a year from uh, a set of products. Uh, so this is. We have been slightly fly these days because um, it is more. We used to get one cocaine a year, but we were like, oh, what's one cocaine? Normal cocaine? Can we get cocaine heavily peated as well? So, yeah. so uh, and. We have a gear for Caterham, yeah. so uh, why not showcase what Caterham has and offer? So, yeah, we, we are trying the heavily peated expression from Caterham. Uh, this is actually the oldest uh, expression of heavily peated to date on the market. So, an eight year old uh, is cast strength of 59.5% alcohol. Uh, I mean, the Caterham heavily peated range is certainly. It's been a huge talking point over the last number of years since we started doing it um, back in 2015. Um, and certainly, it's a cracking whiskey. Just, it, yeah, everyone's comments so oh, what the silly characteristic, you can get more so in a bourbon, but doing the, the heavily peed, um, it's, and obviously, this one here is actually in Oloroso. Um, so it's all a little, so you, unfortunately the colour, yeah, a lot of people like it's all a little, so you think it's more dark in colour, but it's a, yes, full maturation in a little, so, so people, some people are asking in the comments already, is it, is it a re-racked? No, this is full eight years in a little, so cast. The nose is glorious now. Mm -hmm. Remember when we were, we were selecting these and um, we'll give our, um, we'll give Finley a kind of, uh, I'm, we met someone's kind of a bit official, but uh, an idea of what we're looking for. Um, we'll get our spring band, all the road, hazel burn, cocaine, and heavily peated cocaine. And they'll ask, obviously, he's not got a huge amount of range range to choose from for a, a, a heavily peated. And they went, I've got one or two of the oldest ones, and would you fancy those? And obviously, um, this is a bit ask Ronald if that's okay, because in case there's conflict with cocaine, he's like, no, it should be okay, because it's. It's not going to, you know, a single cask of this for Kilcairn is not really, no, uh, you, although I don't think Dave was too happy. But. Yeah, <laughs> looking at it for a single cask wise, if there is something that they probably had to take samples of this cask previously and they probably earmarked it, you know, if a single cask was used in a batch for a single getting heavily repeated, uh, it might be lost with its uniqueness. So sometimes they do come across casks that earmark for single cask. May that be for the malt vessel for cadden heads and stuff. So we do that quite a lot. And uh, when and Cam does it as well, is when we're taking some samples, you know, mark it for different things. Well, that single cast uniqueness, uh, same for spring bank long or hazel burn. Um, you know, society bottles occasionally used to do that yeah. as well, but uh, the volume of society, they've got to mix a few, or a few casts together. So if that cast is unique, then showcase the quality of that single cast. And before Kilcairn and get any of their own club, we'll get this one stolen. So <laughs> I could imagine this to be here if they, if they ever do anything like that. Um, that um, they might not, I'm not sure, but that would possibly be one. But I remember when we tried it, it myself, Ryan and Finlay, and there wasn't even really, when well, we tried it, I was like, that's, 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 that's good. That's yeah. 606 bottles, so a good volume from that cask as well. Um, and price point was it seventy quid. The, the 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 likes of the the, and this has been twenty fifteen as well. So this is the first year of the yeah. heavily PE two. Um, the this could be. I don't know if this is the last one or not. I'm, I'm not sure. There might be some others. Yeah. There might be. Yeah. Cause I bet I won't say because I don't know if it is or not. Um, the the thing with this as well is the, with with the cast not being over dominant as well. It's got cocaine behind it. It's not just. And you'll know better than most. You were there at the opening twenty years ago. You know, like you've seen the whole development of Kilkerran. That you know, like seen something like this. You know, did you think twenty years ago you'd be? That's it. No, twenty years ago, because yeah, when they purchased the the building in the year two thousand, spent four years putting all the stills, washbacks, everything, and that's the idea thing about the company as well. It's not a case of going to the bank, can we get X amount of million to go and open a distillery? It's doing a little bit every year. So that's why it took us four years. And uh, Frank McCarty was directly involved with that, with sourcing different equipment from the stills from the Old Ben Lewis distillery, um, Mill from Craig Ellicky and stuff. So it's that's using that experience he's got at working different distilleries and, and then creating his style he wanted as well, because the stills were altered slightly as well from taking the flange off and raising the line arm up slightly to create a style of what he wanted to put forward 
uh, to put it calms them back on the mat and stuff. So uh, did a good job, eh? Did a good <laughs> and I always we do like a party. So throughout the years, I had a big party when it opened. Three years when it's literally called whiskey, and another party, and then five years when we put say some more whiskey on the market and stuff like that. So it's a good party. I remember the twelve year old one. Yeah. That was a good party as well. So. Hopefully they're going to continue with a 20 year old party. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> but even this one, this is at 59.5 percent in alcohol. You know, I actually have put a little bit of water in it and it, it's really but, but even it, it's not that I needed to put water into it, it was still you know, it did taste like 60 percent yeah. pretty much. You know, um, and a lot of flavour behind it. Now actual addition of the water. It gives it more of a kind of it's probably gives it a bit more of a youth, but not in a bad way, but it gives it more of a kind of youthful spirit. But really nice. Uh, Peter Whiskey works. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we yeah. see that in the market with numerous different distilleries. Uh, a lot of distilleries put Peter Whiskey in the market, don't even put an E statement on it. Um, because, yes, yeah, some people, it's not so much now, but you know, come back five, ten years ago, is that if you've seen six year old on the label, people are like, oh, it's going to be harsh, spirity, immature. But it's not the case. So, yeah, it's nice to see you nice heavily peated with a A statement on it of being eight, eight years old. Ruth asked, right, what are batteries? It's in the taste of those. I need oh, to go up to Aberdeen for that. Yeah, I did see it and I actually went, what's a battery? I did I miss that one? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's more common up in the sort of Aberdeen area. Um, it's a long bottle of harm, basically. It's, it's a very, I'm trying to describe it, it's like a pastry. Be, and it's normally served with more butter on top of it. So it's called a buttery, but yeah, it's normally served with butter on top of it. So uh, that's that way it happened. But yeah, it is. Good Scottish cuisine there, then. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, for the minor bar bars and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of good kind of um, comments from this one as well. Stephen said it's absolutely delicious. D Chevron, well, this is amazing. Um, Put the bell in it again. Ryan saying he's getting kind of dried strawberries with it. I think again with the with the cast too, it's yeah. not not overly dominating there as well. That it's gonna it's giving some of the sherry yeah. elements, but not because there is a sweetness to coquina okay, anyway. You know, it's typically a light floral fruity note to it, um, a wee bit of peaty smoke in the back. Of course, it's the heavily peaty version. It's certainly there is that a sweet note to it as well. But there's. Uh, is there a huge other also sherry character that comes through? Probably not, but it's a nice balance. Yeah. D Chevron's asking, pardon my ignorance, but what is the difference between original and cast strength? Um the original collection we do is it's generally well we do cast strength and then um, bigger volumes as well. But the original collection is is, is a lot bigger volume of cast that we do, and we do those at forty six percent. Now with whiskey there's so many different ways you can have it too. Sometimes cast strength works better. Sometimes it needs a bit of reduction, and we have a kind of, especially for like going worldwide as well, a single cask doesn't get very far. So having larger batches as well, as long as it tastes good, as long as it kind of flavour profile from it. And forty six percent we do with the original collection is our kind of preferred drinking style as well. Right? Drinking strength. Um, the if it's better cast strength, we will bottle it cast strength. If we feel it needs reduction, it's we'll, we'll reduce it as well. So it's kind of again, I said it when I was like, it's hard for coaches. Yeah, yeah. You look at some markets and listings, uh, using Sweden for example. Sometimes they have got special listings. They're wanting X volume. Well, you can't do that with single cash. So maybe doing the original collection at forty six fits the bill for doing special listings and stuff. So uh, yeah, different markets and stuff. And yeah, if you, if you do. A single cask and you try and put it worldwide it's like one case for you two cases for you and um, so then the collection stays in the uk and then the original collection we've got a bit more volume and we can do a worldwide market for it we cal milne saying batteries are a dense quassel so that's <laughs> go i i have to i've heard of it i couldn't tell you what they are but um so yeah. if it's scottish we'll just deep fry it again <laughs> and that's the generally what we'll do well, we'll move on to the final dram of the night. So, um, dram number eight is from the Tobermory Distillery. Um, this one is 17 years old and it's bottled at 53.3% in alcohol. Now, Tobermory, like our sister company Springbank, do different variations. 
you know, Lock Lomond do it as well, Ardmore, there's a lot of distilleries that will do different, you know, whether it's peated or unpeated. And this is Tobermory's peated version called Lechek. Um, now, we've got it called Tobermory, and one of the questions we get asked is, why is it called Tobermory and not Lechek? Now, our, the way that we look at um, kind of copyrights as well as trademarks, we like to do it from the distillery its name. Now, Tobermory was originally called Lechek as well, and we used to call some Lechek and we used to call some Tobermory. But to sort of, I think we need to, to get some consistency. Yeah. Now we do some, like from Bunahab, and they've got some trademark names, the peaked ones called Nostoysha, Margadale, we've bought in the past. There's another one that begins with a T that I cannot pronounce. Um, and, but we've always done it, it's, it's distilled at Bunahab. And Loch Lomond, we do, it's, there's Inchbad, Inchmurn, Cross to, um, I don't know, I can't remember. But again, we, we name it as Loch Lomond Distillery as well. Basically, we just try to confuse you. No, um, we, we, we we're obviously we protect the own trademarks as well. Even though we're allowed to use some of these, we feel that if we don't let anybody else use ours, then I feel that we should be respectful with those as well. So with the uh, Tobermory, it is distilled at Tobermory. This is the peated one, but also the new flavour wheel will also represent very quickly that this is clearly not the stand of Tobermory as well, as we've scored a five from the peat level there. Um, and this one, funnily enough, when we did this one, um, the tasting, it was actually you that pointed out first, and, and I agree, I, I thought exactly the same, that we actually put the cocaine, like when we were doing the, the, the tasting notes, oh, right. that we, we picked the, the legic and the cocaine at different days, but when we did the tasting notes, I put the cocaine after the legic, but we actually thought in the end, this is actually, Peter, and you were going after the tasting. Like, That's a good thing to know, because next time I do one, yeah. we'll put this one before that one. But it's not just a case of it's a big smoke hit in your face. There's a lot of flavour behind this one as well. It's got that kind of creamy toffee notes as no, well. Is it, when we're doing the tasting notes, that's the perfect time for us to like what whiskey works after it. And that was the prime example there. Initially, yes, we had the cocaine last. And we're like, well, that lens you tried before is more peaty. That would work last. It seemed more yeah. ends. It seemed more kind of boisterous. A bit more. There's a lot of kind of but it's not a case of all, you know, some people say, well, why do you, you know, the older ones, the end and stuff like that, it's none of the case and stuff. Uh, whereas, you, you know, I was doing, I was looking at a line up for a taste and I've got uh, next week up in Stonehaven and I've got 25 of those actually second in the line up. And that's one of the reasons uh, it'll fit perfectly in there. Okay, they sort of eat palate cleanser of the first brand and then go into this older expression before we go into some more Peter whiskies and stuff in the tasting. The um, this one as well, it's a cracking coastal peaty whiskey as well. It's got the kind of iodine notes, um, it's got those kind of like really salty kind of flavours to the vanillas, to the bourbon cask. Um, it's, I think it's a cracking trap, it's a cracking one to end the tasting with as well. You know, it's, it's a good end. And um, one of the questions we get asked as well from Whiskey Rover was the price is interesting, which could go either way. I'm not sure, yeah, I think possibly. Be, with these as well, with Lechik, um, we've had ones in the past that we bottled. These are ones that we've bought, at, we, we've, we don't have a huge amount of. And these were bought at a different, we've only got these a couple of years ago. And the price of them were pretty high. To be honest with you, see now, they're probably double, treble, quadruple. I actually looked at a list that we got offered just a couple of months ago. And the same vintage was probably at the bottle of like 350. Yeah, and it's when I mean, every you know, that's good. Would you, for a what, what would the topic point be there if you bottled a, a 17 or something like that? Whiskey at 350. You know, it, we, we, I mean, we didn't even contemplate buying it at that price. You know, yeah. we, we got fortunate, we got these ones at the time. You obviously want to bottle it at a time that is uh, 130 pounds for the bottle, it's expensive. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not, it's not, but I think when you look at some other legends on the market from Independence too. I think it's it's a good level for it, you know. Um, and it, try it blind and not think about the price and that. Yeah, it's the whiskey there. Like. I think as well that that would give a lot of island whiskies. It's I mean, it's money. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you probably have to pay double that for those as well. That's it. I mean, that's the thing. The the demand for whiskey. There's a huge market. People that are 
automatically drawn to PE whiskey. Uh, some people say the PT are the better and stuff. So there's a huge market for heavily PE whiskey, but as the top point there is, there's a there's a price point to it as well. But even then, nowadays, 130 pounds for a great quality whiskey. And we'd have probably said five, ten years ago, that's crazy. It, it, it's not now. That's the that's probably the, 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 the reality just now. But there, there's some, as I said, we could probably put an extra, you know, um, 50, 60, 70 quid in that. You see some other um, bottlers doing it. And it, that's not enough disrespecting anybody else. You know, we we're just fortunate we can price it at this. And, but I know it's more expensive than the last ones we've done, but we've paid different pricing for those. And these are one of the variables that we've got to kind of like look at when we're actually doing it. And as we mentioned earlier, we can't just put a, a price on a, you know, a five, a, a 10, a 15, 18, 20 year old whiskey or whatnot. Um, any thoughts on this one? I think everybody's still debating about what a butter is to me. Yeah. We're making everybody's got a plate here and butter, the butter scones, we've got. Um, everybody hungry. Making me hungry, actually. That's a, no, no. I forgot to mention the other one about the club. Uh, obviously, we just done, recently done the, the Burnside, uh, the 35 sale. So, that was a, a top point why 35 sale and stuff like that. But we've got to look at it as well uh, when we're doing some of the whiskies and you know, the price point. If we bought that at 70 CL, yes, it'd be much more expensive. And uh, we're making it more open doing it at 35 CL. Um, there's numerous factors in it. And certainly, I think, like I said before, 35 CL. It's more inclined. We're all opening whiskey to enjoying and drinking. Um, you're probably more inclined to drink it when it's at 35 sale. Yes, there's a collector's market there for doing sort of some rare whiskies. And, you know. I think it puts the collectors off the 35 sale as well. Um, it gives more. I mean, if we did that for one side at 70, I think we'd have, it would have sold out quicker, for, you know, which might be that's easier, but it's not part of it you're, you're trying to make sure the club members can get a good whiskey one to drink so and even at 70 cl it's going to be more expensive of course you know yeah. whereas 35 cl you're getting to try 25 year old like crack and dram as well um and, and nowadays it's, it's kind of if you went to a bar and tried to get a 25 year old whiskey yeah. you know um it's it's, it's not cheap because there's it's, 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 the last few club bottles have been fantastic but they Right, obviously the Burnside there, the last wee sherry series, the 20 sales, again, again a huge talking point with the, the three different types of sherry. You mean uh, the last wee, the ball been fantastic, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and the, what was it, the... With the Glintock, the Glintock, that's one of my favourite, I, I still stand by, that's one of the best. And then the expensive. The, well, the, the, the uh, unnameable. Unnameable. Good 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 good. Yes, but that was a huge, I've done that in the tasting there. Recently as well, so it was blown away. Yeah, it's a cracking track as well. But yeah. I think um, this one, uh, they should definitely get a little bit for its money. This one, uh, again, I think the are both smokies, my notes, mm. musky over. I no, I get that. I've got a real ghost dog now. You've got, I mean, the, even our, our taste notes, lime, coriol, germline, TCP, iodine, shortbread, creamy, toffee, salt. Oh, we're waiting for all the hits there. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> it's a whole coastal influences there. But it's true, it's there. Um, but it's one you want to keep going back to. But Marjorie asking, any of these reached the other side of the pond? Unfortunately, Marjorie, these are only available within our cat and get shops um, in Campbelltown, Edinburgh, London. Um, Single cats, you know, we know we've got eight different single cats here, but the, the even in one, it's so difficult to, to spread it. We will have other things coming your way though, so don't worry about that. But fortunately, the ones here um, are not going to be, but we'll, we'll, we'll be bottling other stuff that should be coming your way. Though. It's something we are looking at. Well, see, the Cancel Shop will do worldwide shipping if we can ship to certain countries, so we'll do it and uh, offer some tax sheet free and stuff. And we're always looking at a way of trying to reduce that, look at new carriers, reduce price and stuff, um, to which we're in the process of looking at different carriers for, um, we've moved yeah. over for the UK, certainly worked there recently, so, and then we want to try and pass it on to the public as well, so uh, keep an eye out on the pricing structure for 
post we don't make money on posters. It's just what all we want to do is cover the cost. But if we can work with you and get better rates for you, then the better. Yeah, it's all about trying to get 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 the whiskey to yourselves. Is thanks to Brexit, it's been been a bit harder. Um, but we want to try and make sure that the whiskey's are more accessible to to people up with the UK um, as easily as possible. And with a Sydney charges yeah. getting. Huge, huge. That's one of the reasons why that we do f see that in the postage rates. It is cheaper the more bottles you buy, obviously. But they say postage for six bottles is fairly reasonable if you break it down by six bottles. But say uh, so we do yeah. in a say, join, a, join a whiskey club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you do we do try to help people who are in that boat and who will reserve bottles in the candle shop and then try and sort of ship them in bulk. Uh, to reduce the cost and stuff like that. So we do offer these sort of services and stuff. So perfect. I think um that's us. Reminds me to do. Yeah, I mean it's the yeah eight cracking drums and you know we usually eight instead of one three winner. To me, they're all good in their own ways. Um, they're all different variety of flavour. Oh, flavor. get off the face, Graham! Come on, give us your winner. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stay at home now. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this one. I, do you know, I probably wouldn't, my go to would be the first two. Mm, I, I was going to say the, the McDuff, um, the Tainich, and the, the Legic for me. Um, I think that's my, I mean, obviously, the, the... taking away the Pokemon, too. What is it, the Pokemon? The two, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic as well. Um, I was trying not to be too biased. I, was, I went from that kind of. Um, but no, it's a hopefully there's a, a stand out there for everybody. And it, you know, if there is one to the winner, then you know, you may as well just bottle that style. But hopefully, there's a variety of different uh, opinions on this range. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Well, a big thank you very much for everybody who uh, not only bought the packs but then decided to, to listen to me and you yeah, for an hour and a half there. So. Um, thanks again um, for all the support as well. I hope you enjoyed the the, the, the drams tonight, and these will be getting released tomorrow. tomorrow yeah, tomorrow. Uh, so they'll be available in the shops tomorrow, and then possibly next week or the week after, I'll be online. So, um, so yes, if you're interested, obviously I'm sure the club members will know. You can contact the shops prior. As soon as you get that club email, you can make that a uh, contact with the shops and put in your reservations and stuff, and hopefully we can fulfil them. Um, but if not, uh, you know, after a tasting, some people do wait for the tastings, they want to try them. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we get trying to get the tasting packs out there on the market prior to the launch so people can try them as well. Even the comments with the 20 cents litre bottles we're doing a lot more of, uh, which has been very popular as well. And now we're looking at doing them in rum, uh, the next rum release as well and stuff. So, yeah. Ruth's asked to don't forget the pineapples, Grant. I'm not sure what that's referencing, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got you had to be at the table the malt's dinner. Oh, all right, okay, okay. <laughs> that's not one for Bob. No, it's not. <laughs> right, okay, well, we'll leave that <laughs> one then. Um, but thanks very much, everyone, and thanks very much to Carly, who's uh, or new Nathan, as we'll be calling you now. Uh, uh, but brilliant. Um, thank you very much, folks. Sarge. Cheers. <laughs>